when I cross my legs cause I have to pee and I crush my own balls cause my thighs are thick anyway speaking of getting crushed balls and thick thighs <clears throat> give me another WWE fucking rant because I, I just uh, I can't take it anymore I'm sorry the current product right now is just straight bullshit now I'm, I'm gonna honestly give a fucking plea a Fucking please, not even, not, nobody's gonna watch my video. I'm gonna be lucky if I get like five views. Okay, fuck you. But just to the universe, not WWE, just like the collective universe, like like to karma or, or whatever the fuck is out there, God, whatever you want to believe in. The collective universe. I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm just gonna give a plea out to the atmosphere. Please fix your fucking product. Just, just fix your fucking product. <clears throat> so apparently, this, this is where this came from. This, this, this. Okay. I guess they're sending out a survey asking people like, why are you pissed off at the product? The fact that they even have to do this, uh, I could spend five minutes on Twitter, and then five minutes on Facebook. And just read the comments and be like, oh, okay, that's why they're pissed at us. They don't need to send out a damn survey. They don't need to send out a damn survey. I'd love to take that survey, by the way. Holy fuck. I... Well, here's the problem. Here, here's, here's the issue. We just had Thanksgiving. And we had Survivor Series. Which, you know, I'll give them credit... With the exception of the endings of the matches, the show was actually good. It was their best show this year, okay? So I will give them credit there. Survivor Series, which is something Vince seems to want to shit all over for whatever reason, was their best show. It was their best show of 2018. Now, considering the bar was so fucking low, it was set so fucking low... That ain't saying much, but I will give them credit. I enjoyed that show. I did not enjoy the outcomes, because the outcomes were bullshit, because Vince is so fucking senile and delusional that, oh yeah, Raw, the shittiest fucking program, not in just wrestling history, but just television history, the single worst fucking waste of three hours of my existence every fucking week goes 6-0. 6-0. Because it was it was Raw versus SmackDown, and the Raw side, Raw team won six and zero. Because Vince is that goddamn delusional that oh Raw, fuck you, fuck you, Vince. You're seen now. You need to retire. Because listen, I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm an asshole. I'm a scumbag son of a bitch, and I will say hurtful fucking things. I admit this. You have to understand. I have spina bifida. I have tethered spine. I, 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 I have herniated discs, I have sciatic fucking nerve pain, I'm in a lot of fucking pain, so I cannot take bullshit very easily. I can't, my threshold of bullshit, not very high. I am actually trying to be a civilized human fucking being here when I say I don't want to wake up one morning, I'm just going to say this, I do not want to wake up one morning, go on the social fucking media and read... Vince McMahon has died. Vince McMahon has passed away at age 904. Whatever the fuck age he is. And then my only thought is, oh, good, now we can finally get some decent fucking programming on Monday night. I don't want that. I don't want to be there in that place. I don't want to be that person. I don't. You know what's going to happen? You know what's going to happen? I'm going to read that and I'm going to be like, good, fuck it. I have some sensibilities left, even though I'm a fucking asshole. And I do not want to find myself in that place. I love what Vince has done. Yes, he created pay-per-view before there was pay-per-view. The first WrestleMania was technically the first pay-per-view. He did he, he he combined the territories. He did things that his father couldn't even dream of. He turned it into a global thing. He has done some amazing things. But he's old, he's senile, and he's outlived his uselessness. Okay, he has gone above and beyond the pale of just pissing me the fuck off with his stupid fucking decisions. He spends five plus years trying to push a failure named Roman fucking Reigns. And, oh, he's got cancer. Okay, fine. God bless him. I, I, I hope he survives. I hope he makes it through. I really, truly do. 
I don't want to see him back. I don't give a fuck. He was a failure as a character. As a character. As a character. Don't get everybody all pissed. As a character, he was a failure. Yet you had all these other major fucking talents they did nothing with because they spent five fucking plus years trying to get this one guy over. And it didn't work. The guy was getting booed out of the fucking building because people were tired of bullshit. And I'll be honest with you. Most of the boos he got had nothing to do with him. The fans were booing Vince McMahon. Those boos were directed at Vince. And, of course, Vince doubled down. Okay. Bullshit. 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 Because, listen, here's the fact. Your viewership, WWE, we want to tune in to escape the bullshit of our lives. We, we all have bullshit in our lives. Your product is an escape from that. Yet we tune in and what do we see? Uh, uh, more bullshit. M more bullshit. You have the bullshit of life. You watch your TV to escape and then you see more bullshit. You see Tamina being pushed. Nobody gives a shit about Tamina. At all. Nothing against her personally. Again, nothing against any of the superstars at all in any way, shape, matter, or form. My beef isn't with them. My beef is with the creative. They have done nothing to make me give a flying fuck about Tamina. But yeah, Tamina's in big spots right now. Nia Jax, same thing. She's green as fuck. Horrible in the ring. Yeah, she's been given title shots. <coughs> she's in, in, in prime spots. She was on the fucking uh, Survivor Series card. Um, why? Why? She's not that good. They should... I... I'm at a loss for fucking words. I, 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 I can't even speak right now. I'm so pissed off. And again, nothing against her personally. But she needed time to develop. They did not give her that time to develop. It's like, oh, she's, she's the Rock's cousin or whatever the fuck it is. And she's Samoan and, you know, Vince like that Samoan cock. Rep his ass. Whatever. Whatever the case is with all that. The Rock's, Rock's distant cousin's relative, whatever the fuck. But we gotta push her on Raw. How about she actually have some fucking talent first? How about you develop her to the point... I mean, seriously, it's like, oh, she can, you know, she she can, uh, you know, do a, do a headlock? Okay, fine, let's put her on Monday Night Raw in a prime spot. I, what? You better have put me on fucking Raw prime spot. I can barely even get out of bed some days. I'm in so much fucking pain. Okay. I can put on a better fucking show. I could, I could throw a stiff fist in somebody's face, too. I mean, Jesus, what the fuck, man? <laughs> I, could complete, I could completely ruin Survivor Series myself. Okay, you could pay me to be doing it. That's another thing. He buys up all these fucking talent. Just so they can't go to other places and, and compete against him. And what's he do? He does nothing with them does nothing with them and they'd sit in catering and eat his food i mean jesus christ vince hire me i will sit around and eat your fucking food i'll do it i'll sit around and eat your goddamn food hire me hire me i'll be your next fucking hogan you hire me i'll sit there and eat your fucking food all day you asshole you see now fuck i'll eat your goddamn food i'll sit in your catering you can pay me to sit there and do nothing I mean, what a cushy fucking job that is, you know? God forbid some of these guys wanted an actual legacy in the business. Nah, fuck that. Let's sit around and eat catering and get paid for it. You got Tyler Breeze, who should be world champion. He's got that much talent, believe it or not. Now, the people who just only simply watch Raw, he's a scrub. I mean, they turned him into a complete scrub, so make no mistake. But the kid really does have talent. He really does have talent. He's on Twitter talking about, oh, I'm buying my fourth house. I don't know why you need four houses, but whatever. That's a good waste of your fucking money. But hey, whatever, whatever. You're you're content to sit there and put on a bear suit and suck a dick? Hey, fine. Fine. Do what you got to do. You know? You're young. Eventually, you're going to get old to the point you can't do it anymore. You're going to wish you had a legacy. You're going to have nothing. You're going to have four houses that you probably ain't going to be able to afford because you're probably not good with your money. But whatever. Let's not get into that. Let's not get into that. You know, hey, 
You're making money, doing nothing, fine. Hey, it's a, it's a great job. I'm, that, I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm going to take that away from them. If you're sitting there doing nothing, bare minimum nothing, sitting in catering, eating another man's food, and they're paying you to do it, I, I can't fault them, necessarily. But, you know, obviously I know they want to make money. I have nothing against that. But, you know, you're young. You want to make money when you're young. When you get older, you're going to be like, well, you know, I ain't going to be doing this forever. Maybe I want to make a legacy for myself where people actually give a fuck about me in 10 years. Seriously, if Tyler Breeze, and I'm just using him as one example, just disappeared off the face of the planet, nobody would know he... he, 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 he his own family would be like, who? I mean, it'd be like a Mandela effect. But who, who? Tyler who? Nobody know. Nobody fucking know where he went. Nobody care. Nobody care. He would just bloop. Just phase out of existence. Nobody would even notice. And that's sad. That is absolutely sad. You got guys like Cesaro. And this goes back to my Thanksgiving uh, thing that I started a minute ago. This guy should be world fucking champion multiple times over. Instead, what are they doing? They're fisting him with a fucking turkey and rubbing cranberry sauce on his man nipples. Do you understand? They're having a goddamn food fight. Do you know how fucking juvenile and bullshit that is? A Thanksgiving food fight. Every fucking year. They're paying 30 writers to come up with, Oh, it's Thanksgiving. Um, let's have a food fight. <laughs> let's throw some cranberries at Cesaro. <laughs> Again. Pay me, Vince. Pay me. You fucker. You senile fuck. You pay me. I could come up with that. What did we do last year? We had a food fight? Hmm. Let's have a food fight this year. <gasps> wow. 2019? Let's have another food fight. Fuck it. Hey. It worked so well last year. Oh, my God. I just... They got this, this, this team of writers. And it's like... Why? Why are you paying these people, Vince? They sit there and say that NXT is, is bleeding money. No. You know where you're bleeding your money? You know where you're bleeding your money? On your creative. For the last, what, eight weeks? That shit, probably even closer to eight months. We have seen the same match, some variant thereof. 18 different times. That's 18 different weeks seeing the same match over and over and over and over. 18. I'm not, that's not an exaggeration. I was like, oh, it's only like three or four. No. Eight motherfucking teen. 18 weeks or whatever the fuck it. Well, it wasn't 18 weeks because you had pay per views where it was like Bailey and Sasha versus Riot Squad. How many goddamn matches can you make of that? I understand. Oh, there's like, you know. There's, there's those two, and then you had th somebody else, and then, then the three of them, and then, then you get the, the, the six, and the, so it's the two on the two, and the one on the one, and the six. There's different variants of it. How many times can I give a fuck? How many times can you possibly think that as a viewer, well, you're just a smart mark, you're just a smart mark. I'm not a smart mark. I'm just somebody who's sitting there watching the same goddamn thing week after week, wondering why the fuck I'm even here. That has nothing to do... With any of that. Or you're just a smart mark. No, no, no. It has nothing to do with smart mark. It hasn't just... I have active fucking brain cells in the human being. That's what that is. I have active fucking brain cells. And I said, I have seen this match 18 goddamn times in a fucking row. And not even just, like, m mixed up. Like, okay, I see it week one. And then week four, I see it again. And then week eight, I see it again. No, it was week after 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 week. Oh my Christ! I can't even breathe after doing that. After saying week after week after week, I can't. I can't fucking breathe. Oh my God! No, of course the excuse is well they had they had the Evolution pay per view they had they had the Crown Jewel pay per view they had like fifteen fucking pay per views in like two minutes. And it's like, well, whose fault is that? You can't space that shit the fuck out? Oh, they throw that Saudi money at you. Oh, money Okay, no, that's not how it works. You space that shit out. We had, we had, we had fucking, 
WrestleMania, and then two minutes later we had the Greatest Royal Rumble. First off, you couldn't come up with a better title than the Greatest Royal Rumble, which we just had the actual Royal Rumble back in January. You couldn't come up with a, a you know, okay, so you got the crown jewel. You couldn't come up with something that's Saudi Arabia, like the desert fuck. Okay, that would be a pay-per-view, the desert fuck. Okay. You couldn't come up with a fucking name. Uh, um, the really, really great Survivor Series in Saudi Arabia. Really? The awesome Super Extreme. I mean, what? Are you kidding me? You couldn't come up with a better fucking name? Than the greatest Royal Rumble? Really? Really? The greatest Royal Rumble. The the, uh, the greatest Royal Rumble. As opposed to the original Royal Rumble. Apparently it's not the greatest anymore. Uh, what? Oh my god. My... I think I'm starting to have an aneurysm. Oh my Christ. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Hey, it's not my billion dollar company or million dollar company, whatever the fuck it is. I don't know. Who cares a shit? Of course, the stock prices went down. You wonder why the stock prices went down. You got motherfucking Saudi cocksucker assholes dismembering people and putting their fucking body parts in the motherfucker's garden and there's Vince shaking hands with the people. Talking about, oh, Monday Night Raw, Roman Reigns, Okay, fuck you. Okay, fuck you, Vince. Now, listen, I, I I get it. I get it. They couldn't cancel the show. They really couldn't. And you know what? For the f two fans, the two legitimate fans in Saudi Arabia, they, it was unfair to cancel and, and because they bought their tickets, whatever, however that works over there. They gave it to them or they killed their family. Whatever the fuck they did to get them into the building. Threatened to kill their families, whatever. I, who knows? I don't know what they what they threatened over there. Who the fuck knows? They probably killed their mother and said, uh, you can come to the show or I'm going to kill the rest of your family. Who knows what they did over there? Shove the Koran up their ass. Who the fuck knows what they did over there? I don't know. But the people who were there ready to see it, you you really couldn't cancel and say, well, fuck you. You know, it wasn't fair to them. Now, the rest of the people there clearly didn't know anything about the damn product. And the only reason they do it a is for propaganda. It's fucking propaganda. Sitting at the, the greatest Royal Rumble, listen to Michael Cole talk about oh they're you know, they're so progressive and they're so they're so with the times. Yeah, sure. That's why the women couldn't come over there. Fuck you with that bullshit. The propaganda. You fucking propagandist bullshit. They're using American fucking entertainment bullshit as propaganda over there, and you're fucking allowing them to do it because they threw some money at you. It, it, that's pathetic. I mean, at least have some goddamn dignity, Vince. If you're gonna fucking be a stupid scumbag sellout fuck, at least have some dignity. At least don't use your fucking products for some bullshit propaganda. At least don't go that far. You can at least do that. Don't even get me started with that. Honest to God. Like I said, I understand it wasn't technically fair... It was days and weeks before the event. Where, where else are they going to... Where, where, where else could it be held? What are they going to do? Everything was set up. You were kind of in a, in a, in a box. And I get that. I, I won't fault WWE for that. I won't. Because I'm not understanding people were calling for, for them to cancel the show and blah, blah, blah. But it does look pretty fucking bad. Like, you want me... To give a shit about your company when you're clearly taking a paycheck from them and it's all about the fucking money you have no morals you have no dignity which i understand is business you you know cutthroat i get it fuck it literally cutthroat in this case fucking asshole scumbag fucking saudi fucks whatever i'm talking about the people who did what they did not the whole group you know i'm not like i'm not a, i'm not a trump supporter let's put it that way i'm talking about the people who you know Whatever. Seriously, a bunch of scumbag fucks. And they're over there, we're going to entertain them. Yeah, bullshit. You ain't entertaining. The only thing you're doing is, is collecting a paycheck. And then, seriously, you put guys like Cena in a fucking bad spot. You're going to... 
I mean, seriously, you're going to promote him for a, for a match? Cena's got other shit going on. He's not going to be sitting there, oh, yeah, I'm going to go over there with the fucking Saudis. And, uh, yeah, just pretend like nothing happened because, you know, I'm, you know. You put you put that motherfucker in a, in a bad spot. And he's got to worry about his outside activities. Next thing you know, he's 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 gonna be labeled a Saudi supporter. Yeah, good luck in Hollywood with that shit. You know, I mean, come on. I will give Kane some fucking credit. Glenn, whatever the fuck his name is, I'll give him some some credit. The motherfucker's mayor of of Knoxville or. Go fuck yourself, Ville. Whatever the hell it is. Hicksville. Whatever the fuck it is. It's out in, out in Timbuktu out there. He just became mayor. And he's going over to Saudi Arabia to... I'll give him credit. I, I'll give him credit. Like, some people say, oh, he's Kane. 19, you know, this is 2018. Nobody wants to see Kane in the main event and blah, blah, blah. I've heard that. I get that. I get that. But I'll give Kane credit. That motherfucker comes back. He wrestles. I respect that. Batista, he comes back, he wrestles. I give him that. I respect him for that. You know, unlike somebody like The Rock who comes back for five minutes, oh, I'm going to title, oh, smell what The Rock is cooking. Yeah, I smell what The Rock is cooking. Bullshit. Fucking Lesnar, he comes in, honestly, he comes in, stands in the ring, bounces up and down, his tits flap up and down as he's bouncing. Oh, Paul Heyman's on the mic. And he's getting paid millions of dollars to do that. And he wrestles maybe four times a year. If we're, if we're lucky. You know, so hey, I, I give I will give Kane a shitload of credit. Again, he came back, he actually wrestled. He was on he actually wrestled Raw. When's the last time you saw Lesnar wrestle Raw? When's the last time you saw any of these fuckers? Goldberg. Now Goldberg was just kinda I don't know if he was out of shape. Well, I mean, he wasn't, like, out of shape, but he was, like, out of ring shape. I don't know what... That whole run with him, and... I don't know, man. It was weird. Because... I respect the fact that he wanted to come back. You know, he wanted to wrestle in front of his kid and all that. I, I, I dig that. I, I respect that. But what they did with him, what... I don't know. Again, I, I guess he was very limited what he could do. I don't know what it was. That was like one of the most worst stretches ever, especially the whole Kevin Owens match where he lost the title. That was just fucking garbage. It was just whatever. I mean, honestly, guy, honestly, guy, the guy had like five minute matches. He had like four or five minute matches. Now I understand that's Goldberg, and the whole point is Goldberg. He, you know, he spears and jackknifes or jet, whatever the fuck that move was he did, and that's it. Okay, I get that. I get that was the gimmick, but like he could barely. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I get that he's old and shit, and... I don't know. It's just... Whatever. It's just, whatever. I don't want to get into that, but... I, I just... For the life of Christ, I don't understand why... This company... And I'm going to get back to what I was getting at before. Why this company can't just put on decent fucking programming. I don't get it. I, I so for the love of Christ, Monday and Tuesday nights are the most god awful time of the week. I don't look forward. I am not looking forward to the next Raw. I, I'm not. I, I should be, because there should be a storyline that actually, oh I don't know, A makes sense and B carries over for more than like two seconds. You know, <clears throat> call me crazy. I'll be honest with you, I don't even know what... I Listen, I watch this show. I watch this shit on a regular religious basis because I am a complete fucking loser with nothing. I am honestly one rainy day away from putting a gun in my fucking mouth and ending it all. That's the type of people who are watching this show. You got a bunch of kids who don't know any better and suicidal fucking morons like myself. That's it. That's it. Well, they, 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 That's the universe right there, Vince. That's the people that are watching your program. Because you've alienated 99% of the other fucking people. You alienated everybody else. Who may actually watch your shit. And I'll be honest with you. I can't tell you. I can't tell you. The reason. Like, seriously. As a fan of the product. 
Well, actually, not a fan of the product, fan of the concept of the product, because the product right now is just straight garbage. As a wrestling fan, I don't know how to tell somebody who's not a wrestling fan, yeah, you need to tune into Monday night. You need to watch this on Monday night. I, I wouldn't subject my worst enemy to that. I wouldn't even have my stepmother watch that. And she's a piece of shit. She's a stupid bitch who came and took over and took everything out. That was my mother's. She completely... Uh, don't even get me started with that shit. I wouldn't even subject her to fucking Monday Night Raw. No, no. I wouldn't subject my stepmother to Monday Night Raw. Do you hear the words that I'm speaking to you? Do you... Do, do the words fucking compute... I don't even know what to say. I am completely at a loss for words of how stupid this product has become. Uh, don't even get me started with the 6 and one shit. Apparently, I don't know what what what's going on. Is that one of the producers fucked up and let the fucking SmackDown win one at the, 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 the pre-show or some shit. And it was supposed to be a clean sweep. Because, like I said, Vince is that fucking senile and that fucking delusional that the worst fucking product that's ever hit television, ever, currently, right now, which is Monday Night Raw, just so Lucy didn't get it, gets a clean sweep. And, you know what? I don't know what to, I, I don't even know what to say. I, I, I mean, it's just, you're going to insult my intelligence like that? Fuck you. How about that? How about that? Fuck you, Vince. You want to insult my... The only reason they did that... The only reason they did that... Is because... They could have this little segment for like... Two minutes of Baron Corbin... Worrying about his job. Well, it was a clean sweep. That's the only reason they did that. That's it. That and Vince's ego. That's it. And it was the worst, stupidest fucking thing imaginable. They won the backstage segment where Stephanie's sitting there talking about, well, you know, you guarantee you a sweep because if you don't get a sweep, you're not going to keep your job. And then on Monday night, well, there was a clean sweep, but you're going to have to have a match and, and determine if you're going to stay the uh, general manager. So it completely meant nothing. It meant nothing. That segment on Smack or on Survivor Series with the two of them in the back meant nothing. And then the same thing with Shane. Shane's like, oh, we're going to be shake up because we, we lost. We were swept and we're going to be these, these, these you know, we're going to shake it up. What's he do? He goes in there and does nothing. 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 He went on Twitter, like, oh, I'm going to be a shake up. There was nothing or whatever. And that shake up, but whatever the fuck they want to call it. He did nothing. 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 Now, how am I supposed to get behind that as a storyline? Uh, and and uh, speaking of storylines, they had, they had, now I understand women's pay-per-view evolution, which had its own issues. I understand Crown Jewel, Saudi Arabia, they, they booked like 15 pay-per-views within like a two minute segment. I get it. I understand that. So when Survivor Series came up, they had... About three week build, if that. Okay. I get that. I think it's bullshit, but I get that. But for three weeks, they did nothing. They did nothing to build for Survivor Series. Nothing. Nothing. Raw specifically, nothing. SmackDown did a little bit. Raw, no. And what do you have? The go-home show before Survivor Series, which is one of your big pay-per-views, one of your big four of the year. What did they do? They tried to book the entire fucking match. They didn't even have... Because those who don't know, Survivor Series is, is basically a five-on-five -five match where you've got you know one team, and it's an elimination. So you could eliminate one guy from one team so then it's four on five you could have everything up to like one on five and two on three and four on fuck and whatever you can have it all they didn't even have the, the fucking teams all filled out 
In fact, they were changing the fucking teams 35 minutes in the, the pre-show of, 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 uh, what? What? Now, I understand, I get the whole Nia Jax, Becky Lynch, she punched her in the face. Which was deliberate as fuck, by the way. You can sit there and say, well, shit happens. No, shit don't happen when you're doing shit deliberate, okay? That was a deliberate fucking punch. So it was either... It was either a spot... Or just Nia sucks. I, a little bit of both, probably. I think it was a work, personally. I think, I think it was part of the fucking program. Because... Well, actually, if you think about it... it it worked out very well for all three women involved. Actually, shit worked out. For, actually, everybody involved with this because, again, it was Raw versus SmackDown. So you had Ronda Rousey versus Becky Lynch, and of course they they were going to have Becky Lynch lose. Of course, Becky Lynch right now is so popular, you don't want to see her lose. She can't lose. So what they do? I don't know. Maybe it was a work. Maybe she did really punch her. Maybe I don't know. Because it would make sense, because now all of a sudden, oh, she's gotten her, she, she crushed her face, and now she's out. So now you take the women's champion, who's the most over since, like, Stone Cold, and you take her out of the equation, you put Charlotte in the middle, and then all of a sudden you build Charlotte up to be this big badass who just snapped, and give me a break. Everything she did, everything Charlotte did in that match was exactly what they were going to do for Becky Lynch. They did nothing except swap the two women out. So now all of a sudden Charlotte's got this 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 push. It's, it's like oh, she went off the deep end push, cause she dude she beat her ass. I mean, the people say well it's fake and shit. I don't know. There, you can see welts on on uh, Ronda and shit. She was whacking her with that stick like nobody's business. Like there was legitimate welts and like 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 bleeding and shit. It was fucked up. But whatever. Cause sometimes they do take like st like shit. Lesnar was was caught knifing himself and cutting himself that one time. So, I mean, they, they do do that kind of shit. You couldn't pay me to fucking cut myself, but whatever. I mean, obviously it's fake, but it's, you know, it is what it is. So I wouldn't be surprised she took a stiff shot just for that. And then what did they do with Nia? Now they're turning her into, like, this big heel, and they're actually playing it up. There was really no no heat for her for quote-unquote ruining the, the Survivor Series. Think about it. Nia's over as a heel, which, by the way, she's getting legit heel heat, unlike Roman Reigns, who was supposed to be the babyface, but still getting the heat because everybody hated him because they hated Vince in the direction of the company, so they boo Roman Reigns the fuck out of the building. So your, your, top, guy, your, your top dog, big dog, arr, big dog, big dog was getting his ass handed to him. And he was literally getting booed. It was to the point where they had to tone down the freaking fan booing. They actually had to manipulate the audio because he was getting booed so fucking much. Like, you couldn't even hear him on the mic. It was so bad. Now, she's actually getting legit heel heat because of it. So she's over as a heel. Ronda. Well, Ronda was kind of weird because people still want the Becky Lynch, so they were kind of booing Ronda. And she was supposed to be the baby face because she just got her ass handed to her. So that one's a little bit weird. But now you put her with Nia, and then she's going to be the, the baby face, so she's kind of, you can tweak it so that she's still, you know, the good guy. And then Becky Lynch is more than over, like, you can't wait to see her come back. And now Charlotte's this, this you know, she's going off the deep end too, so everybody in, involved actually won. Part of me actually starts to think maybe the creative actually did something smart for once. Because if it was going to be the way it was originally set up, and everybody wanted to see Ronda versus Becky Lynch. Well, guess what? Becky Lynch is going to lose, obviously, because you're not going to let, you're not going to let, uh, Ronda lose. She's probably going to lose at WrestleMania. Probably to one of them, either Charlotte or her. So, why do that to a character that's already over? Now, Becky Lynch could lose and nobody's going to care. Especially she did the kendo stick and started beating the hell out of Ronda and all that stuff. If they did the same spot with her, it would have it would have been fine. But still, all all the women in, in 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 all the women are now over on some level. So it it was either a fuck up that turned really really good, or it was a planned spot. Now, 
part of me wants to say they actually had the brain fucking cells to actually say, hey, let's do this. Let's 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 change it up and let's do this and we'll see where it goes. But then I tune in Monday night and I'm like, no, <laughs> no, that wasn't a work. But that's part of the that's part of the the work. So it's like, it's a conspiracy theory. It's like nine eleven. Like I got a tinfoil hat on with this shit. I don't know. I don't know. Because I know that this company can produce good television because I've seen it. I've seen it. I'm a faithful viewer. I've seen it. But what I haven't seen lately is a product that actually doesn't make me feel like a fucking imbecile. So, because what better way to do that? You're going to fuck with the fans? That's That, that was the whole thing about Naya being the... Uh, the sole survivor survivor series and and she basically did nothing for Bailey and she 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 threw Sasha off the top rope so she'd get eliminated and then she comes in and, and wins and she's the sole survivor after beating after punching Becky Lynch in the face and everybody hates her now because everybody loves Becky and they hate her because she fucking ruined the whole thing you could definitely see why there's conspiracy theory right there cuz you, you know they're doing stupid shit you know for a fact they let her be the sole survivor just to fuck with the fans. So if they're doing that, I think the whole thing was a setup. I think the whole thing. Yes, I think Becky took a legit fucking shot. So he literally took one for the team. And again, we've seen Lesnar do it. We've seen others do it. They cut themselves and shit. We've seen it before. And again, they show the video. Nia, Nia punched her. It was, you know, getting around. It wasn't just like, oh, well, I, I meant to, you know, throw my, throw my punches and oops, it just happened. No. No. That was not. She looked at her directly and said, boom. Okay, it was that simple. It was that simple. Now, either Nia is just not skilled at throwing a fake punch or the whole thing was to set up. I'm telling you right now, I think it was fake. I th well, I mean, the whole thing was fake, obviously, but, you know, Whatever. I think it was a fucking work. I think the whole thing's been a work since day one. And all these, cause then again, you watch all these fucking people on YouTube, and they're like, oh my god, no, yeah, no, 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 no. And all the fans are going ballistic. They need to fire her, and they need to take away her title shot, and Naya's no good. Oh, Naya is no good, but that's neither here nor there. And nothing against Naya. I just, you, you let her cook a little bit more. She had been in the Performance Center a little bit longer. Kept her in NXT or whatever. Sent, oh shit, send her fucking back down to NXT. Let her learn a little bit more and then come back up. She might actually be halfway fucking decent. And I like Naya. Don't get me wrong. I actually like her. She seems like a decent human being. She's a decent character. I like her. She's just not very entertaining in the ring. Her title run was garbage. The whole thing with Alexa Bliss, garbage. That whole sequence. The last 2018 has just been nothing but garbage. I think she's got potential. I do. So I'm not trashing her on that end. I'm just trashing the fact that they're pushing her. You know. It's like Tamina. I mean, fuck who? Who the hell is Tamina? Oh, Jimmy Snooker. No. Fuck Jimmy Snooker. Fuck him. I don't care who she is. The fact is she's not very good. Not anything against her talent in the ring. Whatever. The fact is they have done nothing to make me give a fuck about her as a character. Nothing. She's not interesting. She comes out literally to crickets. You hear the theme music and the crickets. That's all you see. And the people are just sitting there like, okay, let's let's, let's go here. Who's coming out next? That's not, that's not good. That's not good. If Vince is sitting in the gorilla position with his pants down, jerking himself out watching this shit, he's got to sit there and say, oh, what the fuck are we doing to make, make people give a fuck about this woman? And they have done nothing. I mean, she did, literally just came back from an injury. I didn't even know she left. I didn't even... How many people actually realized she had left? Honestly, God, like, if she left the company right now and retired and did whatever, nobody nobody remember her. That's how irrelevant she is as a character. That's it. Now, I don't know what to tell you about that, but yeah, guess what? She's being pushed. She's being pushed. As if she's some big top talent. Uh, she's not, because you haven't built her up, Vince. Uh, I hate to break it to you. So now you're going to put her in the big spot. I'm sorry, she didn't win the fucking uh, 
Women's Royal Rumble and go on to... Uh, she probably will. Fuck it. She'll probably be... Tamina will probably be the one to win the Royal Rumble, go on and win the fucking championship. And people are like, what? Because he'll do shit like that just to fuck with people. He does. He don't give... They don't give a fuck about the fans. They don't care what the fans want. The fans come in and they're like, we don't want to see this bullshit. We want to be entertained. We don't want to see bullshit. We don't want to see food fights. That's not entertaining. It may be entertaining if you're three. Okay, that's entertaining if you're a toddler. You have no fucking active brain cells. You're partly retarded. Yeah, that's fun. Ha 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 ha. Food fight. You got three black guys dressed as pilgrims. Ha 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 ha. That's he- That's funny. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. That's not funny. That ain't funny. Now, listen, I, I don't mind good humor. I don't mind funny humor. Watching a food fight every single fucking year is not fun. It's not. It's just not. It's gotten old. It's gotten boring. And especially when you intermingle it with all the other bullshit that they do. I mean, honestly, God, it took it took thirty plus writers to to come up with a food fight. Okay. Okay. You could have fired all them, Vince. Give me half the fucking. See, that's the problem. They, he could fire all 30 of those writers, hire me, pay me half of what he was paying all 30 of them, and I could come up with the same shit. I could. Again, gee, we had a food fight last year? Eh, fuck it, let's have another food fight this year. Yeah. Brrr, you know, and Vince would get all excited about that shit. Okay? Pay me. I could. I, seriously, I could make your product better. I could totally make the product better. No, seriously, I'm being a little sarcastic right now, but honest God, seriously? You realize there's fan fiction from five-year-olds that is better than the shit we're seeing on Monday Night Raw. You realize a five-year-old can actually book that show better? They're right. No, I'm serious. Uh, Maybe not five, but they're legitimate children. Children who can book the product better and tell better storylines. You know, do you hear, do you hear that? There are armchair quarterbacks who can book this this show, not only better, not only more entertaining, but to the point where it, shit the ratings might actually go up. I, uh, and what's 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 just sadistic in my mind about the whole process of that is that most of the people who are armchair quarterbacking what they should be doing are coming up with better ideas in five minutes than they're coming up with five months. They're literally booking this show minutes before it goes on air. That does not make a good weekly episodic television program. <clears throat> at all. It doesn't. Why is my goddamn phone ringing? Don't you realize I'm in the middle of a clip? Probably Vince calling me right now. It's probably motherfucking Vince calling me right now saying, come on, come over to catering and I'll I'll pay to have you eat my food. Fuck you, Vince. I ain't answering the phone. I got morals. I'm like you. I don't need your Saudi fucking money. I'll eat your food, but I don't want your Saudi money. Fuck you. Asshole. Seriously. Goddamn phone. All these fucking people want to call me like I'm Mr. Fucking Social Hour here. Fuck you. Two days after Thanksgiving and the fucking phone wants to ring. Fuck you. That's what I say to the phone. The phone's got a problem too. I don't even want to start with that bullshit. Because then in a real person, it's a fucking animated, automated bullshit. I got a fucking call from New Jersey. I didn't know New Jersey had a fucking phone. The state of New Jersey. It is automated bullshit. This type of shit that I gotta put up with. This type of fucking shit that I gotta put up with on a regular fuck basis. <clears throat> and all I wanna do is escape. I wanna go to your fucking product and escape and be like, oh my god, that was the greatest television ever. Instead, I go in there and I, I, I finish. Well, I fast forward through 90% of it because I watch the shit on Hulu because I ain't gonna sit there for no fucking three hours. I ain't got cable. I'm not paying for cable. Fuck you. I am not paying for cable. So I go to freaking Hulu for 12 bucks a month because I don't want the commercials. 
And what do I get? What do I get? I get treated to some of the dumbest shit that I have ever seen, ever. Ever. And it's not even, like, accidentally dumb. Like, okay, like, sometimes you can turn into, tune into, like, SNL or something, Saturday Night Live, and sometimes they do a skit, and it's just not, it's just not funny. It's just, I mean, it's okay, but it's not anything to write home about. And you're like, ah, okay. But sometimes they, you come out, and they're like, well, wow, that was a funny skit, you know? Alec Baldwin is, 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 is playing, uh, is playing Trump, and he's sitting there doing a little monkey mouth, a little old mouth. Like, rawr, rawr. Okay, it's funny. It's just, it's just, it's, it's a funny thing. It can be funny. It can be entertaining, you know? Sometimes things are hit or miss. I understand that. Sometimes you turn on Raw, it should be hit or miss. Instead, it's just miss after miss after miss after miss after miss, and it's like, nobody seems to give a fuck. Why? Because they're making their goddamn money. They're making their goddamn money. They're making their blood money from Saudi Arabia. Making their blood money from Fox Sports. They're making their money from all this other bullshit. And yet the product is absolute garbage. Yet I tune in Wednesday night when they do NXT and it's like, holy fucking shit, the greatest thing ever. Why can't you give me a good product and still make your money? I don't understand that. That is something I don't understand. I don't get it. I don't get it. Why can you not give me good product? Why can you not give me a good entertaining show? Something that I is a fan. Now, if if somebody said to me, you know, I, 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 I'm kind of interested in this, what should I watch? Should I watch Monday Night Raw? I'd be a fuck no. You want to watch something? Watch NXT. Do you realize with this whole, uh, what is it, uh, all elite... Uh, Whatever the fuck it is, the, the elites, whatever. I'll just call them the elites because I don't remember what they're called. All elite uh, wrestling, whatever the fuck it is, with Cody Rhodes and all that bullshit. I am more excited for what they might possibly do than I am what's on currently Monday fucking night. I can tell you right now. I am more excited for that shit. And if they want this to be legit, Cody and the Young Bucks and all these other guys and Jericho and all these other fucking people, they want that shit to be legit. They're going to need to do two things. One, they're going to need an actual TV deal to go head-to-head with Monday Night Raw or SmackDown or, you know, go go head-to-head with Vince in general. And then they need to make that shit available to me, who does not have cable, because I will not pay for it anymore because I'm tired of it. You know, I don't know. It needs to be on Hulu or, or get a Netflix deal or something. Actually, I'm surprised Netflix doesn't do, like, a wrestling event. I actually, I'm kind of surprised on that. I, I, they need to do something like that, where it's like, okay, I can see the product. Because things like New Japan, I don't know where to watch that shit. I don't know where to watch that shit. TNA? What, I, who the fuck wants to watch TNA these days? You got Matthews over there doing freaking commentary. It's dull as dicks. Whatever. But even if I knew where Pop TV or whatever the fuck it was, even if I knew where to watch it, I still wouldn't watch that shit. <sighs> so, again, if they're going to be legitimate competition, I'm, again, I'm more excited for potential competition than I am for this shit that I'm currently seeing. <sighs> it's sad. It's, it's, it's depressing. Because I know this company is capable of far better. Vince is far... He, he is... This is what pisses me off about Vince personally. I know the motherfucker can do a good product. I know for a fact he has because I've seen it. I've seen it with my own fucking eyes. Okay, I've seen the product be better. Now, I understand the whole thing when I go into the PG. You got to put smiles on people's faces. How about you put a smile on a crack on my fucking ass by turning me sideways? Fuck you. How about that? How about that? How about that? How about you put a fucking smile on my motherfucking face? said, what do you want to do? You want to make me angry and more bitter as the days go by. And I can't take any more of that. My heart can't take any more of this bullshit. The more fucking rowdy I get, round of fucking rowdy, my bullshit. You want to fucking get me upset, you're going to give me a fucking stroke. And I hope my family sues fucking Vince McMahon because he fucking pissed me off and sent me over the goddamn fucking edge. That's what happens. That's what happened. That's what happened. Oh, my God, I'm fucking, oh, my God, I'm fucking dizzy. Oh, Christ. Okay, I need to take a deep breath, apparently. Holy crap, you see that? You see what you're doing to me, Vince? Oh my god. 
No, again. Again, look, let's look at NXT. Now, I'll be honest with you. NXT, the day before Thanksgiving, day before the holiday, it was not a great show. It wasn't. It First off, it's, it's taped. It was taped shit from before. 90% of the show was just a recap of the pay-per-view. It, it was a filler show. It was far more entertaining than Raw. It was far more entertaining than SmackDown. It was even more entertaining than Raw and SmackDown combined. Okay, that's five hours of bullshit versus one hour of a recap show that had a couple matches that were actually good. That was actually an entertaining show, even though I fast-forwarded through 90% of it. <sighs> I... I, I, I But you know what was refreshing? Not seeing... Not seeing... Champa in a food fight. I'm so glad I didn't see Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa in a fucking food fight with cranberry sauce shoved up their ass. Thank you, Triple H, for putting on a fucking product every week that doesn't piss me the fuck off. Thank you. And I'm being legitimate when I say that. Thank you, Triple Fuck H. Fuck you. And thank you for that. Thank you, honestly, God. Thank you for putting on a product that doesn't piss me off. Because I love that product. Because I love the bad guys. I love the good guys. Tommaso Chomp is the greatest fucking heel in the history of life. That guy is fucking amazing. Velveteen fuck dream. I don't know if he's a heel. I don't know if he's a baby face. He's a heel that's a baby face. It's a perfect combination of greatness. They need to give him a fucking title before Vince calls him up and puts him in catering with Tyler Breeze. Whatever. Although they would make a good tag team, but whatever. Whatever. Of course, not a Raw, but whatever. Then you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna hog tie that kid. That kid, Velveteen fucking dream, has got the single greatest fucking thing going on in his life. And they keep saying, oh, he's only 22. Yeah, he's 22 right now. But you know what? He's going to be 42 up on the main roster doing nothing because Vince ain't going to do shit with him. You know how I know Vince ain't going to do anything with him? Look where Bobby fucking Root is. It absolutely pisses me off and shits my knickers. The simple fact, these guys, they can make it on the independents. They can go to TNA. They can go to... Uh, New Japan, they can go to Ring of Honor, they can go to all these other indie promotions and become big fucking stars there. They can come to NXT, become big fucking stars, main event to the point where every week I was like, oh my god, I can't wait to see what Bobby Roode's going to do. What's Bobby Roode going to do? What's he going to say to uh, Roderick Strong? What's he going to say about his wife? And shit, what, what, what are they going to do? What are they going to do? And then they're like, oh, wow, yay, they get called up to the main roster, and oh, it's so great, and then all of a sudden they're sitting in the main roster eating catering. Bobby Ruth's done his best fucking matches in catering so far. Shinsuke Nakamura. Who, okay, they, they, he's got a mild push, he's, he's like, he's like flatlining at the bottom of the barrel, okay. Really? Clearly they don't give a fuck about Shinsuke Nakamura. Clearly... Clearly fucking Kevin Dunn and some of these other scumbag fucks that Vince got working from the Yes Men cocksuckers. Too, seriously, that tooth fucker Kevin Dunn, I honest to God, I'd, huh, first thing you do, pink slip that motherfucker. I'll tell you, there's, there's, some, there's some old guard there that needs to go fuck themselves. I'm going to, you know, racist motherfuckers. Whatever. Whatever. Not gonna get into that. That's that's for another topic. That's another topic for another fucking day or another fucking clip. But I ain't probably ain't gonna ever do that because I don't give a shit. <sighs> this irritates me on every freaking level. This product just really just. And again, it pisses me off because I know they can do good stuff. I know they can put on a product that's as actually watchable and actually doesn't treat me like a fucking moron. And I understand, I am a fucking moron, I get it. But I don't need to be reminded of it. I don't need to be reminded of that. I am here to escape the reality that is my life because it sucks. 
Just like everybody else. That's why TV is what it is. That's why movies are what they are. You watch the fucking Avengers, the fucking Infinite War, Infinity, Infinite, whatever the fuck it is, that stupid fucking thing. You watch that shit. Why? Because for two and a half hours you get to escape the bullshit of your life. Your kids are assholes. Your wife's a bitch. Your husband's an asshole. Whatever. Your mom's a bitch. Your stepmom's a bitch. Your your mother-in-law's a bitch. Everybody's a fucking asshole coming against you. Your boss is an asshole. Your workers are assholes. Everybody in your family, your cousin, your sister, your brother, your nephew, your uncle, they're all fucking assholes, and they're coming against you on some level. And for two and a half hours, you can just escape all that bullshit and say, oh my god, that's, that's great. Okay. And now, what's Vince wants to do? What's he want to do? No, remember all that bullshit in your life? Here, here we're going to put all this corporate bullshit in here. We're going to push Roman Reigns. Nobody wants to fucking see. Nobody wants to see Roman Reigns. Nobody. You know, I shouldn't say nobody. You got a bunch of kids who don't know any better, and you got a bunch of fat house moms who, you know, think, oh, Roman's going to love me one day. You know, those women, those fucking people, those people who fucking probably need a bath, but whatever. I don't even get into that. But again, it's like you see you see that they have this fucking talent. Sandow was a fan favorite. And when you know what they do? They shat all over him. Rusev. People love Rusev. They shit all over him. They don't even use him. I don't understand that. It's like, well, we didn't, you know... He didn't get over because we we put him over. He got over because the fans put him over. So fuck the fans. The fans are you know trying to hijack the show, or some bullshit like that. Honestly, God, you wonder why they had beach balls. Now correct me if I'm wrong. And there may have been one or two instances, but when's the last time you saw a beach ball at a takeover at an NXT takeover? When's the last time you saw a beach ball, or heard about a beach ball? Yet yeah, WrestleMania, beach ball. People are people in the crowd throwing this stupid beach ball around. Uh, WrestleMania, Beach Ball, NXT, no Beach Ball. That probably means that the product is shit and the fans are bored and they want to fucking... Yeah, they want to hijack it. You know why? Because they're telling you they're not entertained by your bullshit. You can sit there and get all pissed. Oh, the Beach Ball. Oh my God, the Beach Ball. Don't show the Beach Ball. Beach Balls are banned. Why? If the fans were engaged in the product, they would not be batting around a fucking beach ball or sitting there doing the wave. Oh, they're just trying to get themselves over. Yeah, because they're bored. Because if they weren't bored, they'd be engaged with the product. They'd be sitting there thinking, oh my god, what the fuck? It's great. You watch a takeover. Johnny Gargano, Tommaso Ciampa, Velveteen Dream, all these fucking guys. Shayna Baszler, another one. All these, All these people. You're engaged in what they're doing. You can't. You are fixated on what they are doing, not sitting there looking at your watch saying, "Oh my God, WrestleMania is 18 hours long. What the fuck? Let's let's play with a fucking beach ball, like it's an intermission or some shit." 18 hour fucking WrestleManias, and they wonder why. They absolutely sit there and wonder why. And it boggles my mind. They have no clue. They they don't have a clue. Like, why are they playing with the beach ball? Now, it, I admit, it, it, it's shitty for the wrestlers because... And my beef is not even with the wrestlers. Okay, there's some people who can wrestle better than others. Okay, it, it's, just, it's a fact. You know, it just is. And even somebody like a Nia Jax or even a Tamita, I'm not even going to trash their wrestling ability. I'm not even going to trash their wrestling ability. Because it's not on them. Because you can take somebody like a Goldberg who can't wrestle for shit... And turn him into a superstar. They did that. Yeah, his matches were two minutes long, if that. He did two moves, and that was it. And he, he looked dominant, and everybody was, Oh my God, Goldberg, Goldberg. Okay, fine. You can do that. Now, you can't do that with everybody, but you can do that. You can take somebody who doesn't know what the fuck they're doing, they're green as dicks, and you can put them in the main event. You can do that. It is possible to do that. But, on the flip side... When you're doing it to people that nobody cares about, like, I mean, at least Goldberg looked dominant. Tamina? No. Tamina's not, not dominant. And even if she was dominant, nobody cares. You have done, and again, this is nothing against her. I want to see her succeed. Like, if she was on NXT, I'd want to see her succeed. 
I'd want to see her get better on the mic. I'd want to see her, you know, get all the things in place and, and figure it out and get it to working to where, like, I can't wait to see her next week. I can't wait to see what she's going to do next week. I, you know, I want to be in that place. The problem is, not in that place. You know? And again, this this all goes back to what I was saying before. How these guys can make it on the independent scene, how they can make it in all these different places, Ring of Honor, blah, blah, blah. They can make it in NXT, but the minute they hit the main roster, it's like, oh, well, they just couldn't make the main roster. They just uh, they just didn't have it. They just, they were lacking something. They weren't... How can you make it everywhere else except for the main fucking roster? When the main roster is currently garbage, yet a guy like Bobby Roode just, oh, he just can't make it. He's just not cut out. He didn't, we didn't rob that brass ring. How, how the fuck do you grab a brass ring when you basically treat the, the character like fucking trash and do nothing with it? You do nothing for the character. And you make the character absolute bullshit. How are they supposed to reach for that brass ring, Vince? Honest to Christ. When everything is so fucking scripted, to the point where you protect Roman Reigns, who... Now, I'm sorry. I'm going to bitch about Roman Reigns again. Because they fucked him up. They really ruined that character. The man is standing in the ring, holding a mic. He's about to speak. Everybody's booing the fuck out of him. And he is not even acknowledging it. And then he just waits a few seconds and it goes into his canned speech. You can't do that. You cannot do that. He, it's like they tried to protect him so much that they just made him look like a fucking buffoon. Now, if this... Again, the whole point of this is you suspend belief. Now, if he's really coming out there and going to deliver this grandiose speech about how he's going to be dominant everywhere he goes, and everybody's booing him, he needs to acknowledge that. He needs to look at it. Even if he doesn't, like, attack the fans, like, oh, you guys suck, and uh, this town sucks. You know, you don't have to do that. Okay, but he could at least, you know, like, oh, you're gonna, you want to boo me? You know, and then go on and on and on about that. You have to at least acknowledge the fact that everybody in that fucking arena was booing his ass. Again, to the point where they had to tone down the freaking audio. What did he do? And this isn't him. This wasn't him. It was fucking creative. It was Vince. It was all these assholes in the back. It was Kevin Dunn. Oh, oh, oh. oh, they're jerking himself off with his buck teeth. Whatever. It was their fault. They overscripted that shit. And it wasn't playing out with reality. Reality was dictating one thing. Yes, the fans, yes, they were booing him. Yes, they were hijacking the show. Okay, fine. Maybe they were hijacking the show. But the fact is, it was there. You can't sit there and say, well, it didn't happen. You can try to tone down the audio and pretend it doesn't happen. But the fact it is happening. And everybody knows it's happening. And yet you're acting like it doesn't happen. It's like, I mean, you want to talk about fake news. You want to talk about like, fake presidents. Oh, well, what you just saw? Yeah, you didn't actually see that. That's... that's Donald Trump 101 bullshit. Okay. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. I know what I heard. I know what I saw. I saw people booing him. I heard people booing him. Yet he's acting like, well, I'm just going to come out here and get my can speech and uh, the next pay-per-view I'm going to kick his ass. He's a, Brock Lesnar's a little bitch, I'm a fighting champion, blah, 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 I'm the Rock's cousin, blah, 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 blah. That was his, that was his whole fucking thing. That right there was a Roman Reigns promo, in in a nutshell. All the while everybody's like, boo, boo, everybody's booing the bullshit so often. They're literally booing the bullshit out of him. And they wonder why the product is, is as fucking garbage as it is, stale and bullshit and formulaic bullshit as it is. I mean, it's, it's honestly trying my patience. It's just like, are you purposely trying to anger me? Are you purposely trying to make me not watch this product? I mean, do you, do, you, do you hate me as a fan that much that you really don't want me, a faithful, loyal viewer, to watch your program? Maybe they do. Maybe it's like they don't want Attitude Era people who just like, oh, this is good quality programming, blah, blah, blah. Because i got to be honest with you, the whole Attitude Era pisses me off. 
It was okay for Stone Cold Steve Austin to come out and flip me off every fucking week, flip everybody off every week and drink beer because they needed ratings because they were fucking going to tank and WCW was actually going to win the fucking, the fucking Monday Night Wars and run them out of business, so they had to pull out all the stops. All that stuff was cute and great back then. It was like, well, uh, we can have live sex on TV with, with Lita and Edge, and oh, that's just great, ha ha. Now all of a sudden, we're going to go all PG. Now that we've won the war, we're going to go PG and blah, blah, blah. Really? It was okay then when you, when you needed it, but now that you don't need it, fuck it, we're just going to give out garbage? You, seriously, these are like the motherfuckers who at Halloween give out raisins and shit. You, people, you just want to literally egg their fucking house. I literally want to egg Vince's house. Okay, n not literally. I would not do that. No, 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 not condoning it. Metaphorically. Theoretically, I guess you could say. As well. I mean, it's the equivalent of that. You want to egg the motherfucker house, is what I'm saying to you. Like, you literally want to go to go down to WWE headquarters and egg the fucker. Because they gave you raisins for Halloween instead of giving you candy. They gave us the candy, and then they took the candy away and said, No, you can't have that lollipop, motherfucker. You can get some raisins because it's healthy now. Because, you know, we're, we're all mom and dad and bullshit now. Because we, we had to prove that our genitals fucking worked. and had to pop out fucking kids. Now we want to produce a show that puts smiles on people's faces. You're talking about a program where people beat each other up all day. That's not putting smiles on people's faces. They beat each other the fuck up. No. 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 Sort of good. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. And I think the worst part is the fucking wrestling community for the most part. Like, oh, Raw was an 8 out of 10. Dude, Raw hasn't been 8 out of 10 for about 20 years. Give or take. At least 15. Okay, so you got all these... WWE nut huggers who are like, I, I don't know if they're looking for a job there or they're trying to suck up the Vince or whatever the fuck the problem is. See, that's the problem with Vince. You got way too many yes men. I, I, I tell them how it is. I'd be like, hey, motherfuckers, it ain't, it ain't working this way. Your shit's antiquated. Your your logic, your thought process is, is antiquated. You need some new ideas. You need to come up with something new. Honest to God, the, the man is stuck in, in, in Saturday Morning Superstar circa 1988. Okay, he hasn't had an original thought that has actually been halfway decent since then. And that's a fact. It's a fact. The culture, the wrestling culture has changed. And he is antiquated. It's a fact. And I'm not trying to be mean when I say that. Okay, listen, let, let's put it this way. There came a point when his old man, and I use the term old man purposely, reached the pinnacle of his uh, understanding of the business. Vince came along and said, hey, fuck that, fuck the territories, let's go global. Well, let's go national, then go global, whatever. Although, you want to talk about, you know, whatever. I, I could talk about that in a whole other clip, about starting on nationalist, then going global. Fucking Antichrist type bullshit, Trump motherfucker. Don't even get me started with that shit, I can, I can go into that stuff too. I might even be doing a clip about that shit later. Whatever. That's how you start. You start off nationally. You, you, you rally the troops. You're like, oh, everybody, da, da, da. And then you go global. That's how it works. It's, it's, it's how the fucking takeover of the world happens. And I'm not talking wrestling here. But whatever. Whatever. He did that. I appreciate that. But now he's gotten to the end of his his understanding he's gotten to the end of his his whatever you want to call it he's not he's he's hurting the product currently right now he is hurting the overall wrestling product he is and i hate to be the one to say that i hate to even acknowledge that because he has done great things he has done legitimately great fucking things and i appreciate what he has done because, hey, I, I tune into this shit to escape just like anybody else. I appreciate what he's done, but it's gotten to the point where it's like, you're doing the same shit, you've been doing the same shit for 20 fucking years, you don't have a Stone Cold. Cena was no Stone Cold. Cena was no Rock. Cena was not any of these... Cena was part of the Cupcake era where it was just bullshit. 
And then they try to put Roman Reigns in the cupcake era. And it's just, no. It, it simply is not the same thing. I mean, they're treating it the same way. They're treating it as if it's the same fucking product. And it's not. The product has evolved to a point where it is not Saturday morning superstars anymore. It is not the same formulaic bullshit week after week. We've, we, collectively, as a fan base, we, collectively, as a wrestling community, we, as a just wrestling in general, has evolved to something more. Vince has not evolved with that. It's like the dinosaur. He's going to die out. It's that simple. You have to come up with something that make the people give a fuck, and they're not doing it. Again, year after year, food fight. Halloween, year after year, same thing. Somebody's wearing a stupid outfit. And okay, you want to get cute, and eh, okay, it's a little passive, okay. Let's have the divas dress up, okay. That, I don't have a problem with that. Whatever, it's fine. I, I, but it just, every year, it's the same fucking thing. Now, you could have them dress up and still put on a decent match. Like, I could see NXT doing that, to a point, maybe. You want to get cute, it's Halloween. Okay, fine. You could maybe implement something like that in there, but you've got to make it work. It ain't working. Raw and SmackDown just is not working when they do that stuff. Because it's like, they turn it into... They turn it into a cartoon, is what the problem is. Instead of it being based in reality, again, we're supposed to suspend belief and believe that these people are literally beating each other up each week. Yes, in their underwear. <laughs> okay, whatever. But then they, they, they want to get in cute with the food fight. Then they want to get cute in with the, the, the little dress-up for Halloween. They want to get cute with the little Santa hats and the, the bullshit. Again, I don't necessarily have a problem with it per se, but when they turn it into a fucking cartoon, it goes from, I've suspended my belief. I mean, they literally should have a, a, a filter over the camera that turns everything into like a, a, a cell shaded cartoon. That's what it is, is happened. It's gone from actual people just performing an acrobatic bullshit in the ring to, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm watching fucking Saturday morning cartoons. That that's where it has gone to, and it's fucked up, and I can't deal with that shit. You know, it's not because I'm old and cynical and bullshit. I mean, I am old and cynical, but that's neither here nor there. Even honestly, God, even the kids are boring. Honestly, God, they show they they panned out to the camera one time, and they saw a kid yawning in the crowd. Now, granted, it was you know eleven thirty at night or something, whatever the fuck it was during an eighteen hour WrestleMania, whatever the fuck it was. But the fucking kids yawning. I mean. If that's not like a perfect metaphor for what's going on with the product, I don't know what to tell you. You know? But, hey, you know what? It ain't my money to waste. Because everybody keeps saying, well, you know, NXT is not profitable. Well, how the fuck do we make it profitable? Because it's a better product. How do we make it profitable? How How do we do it? I mean, I say we because I am willing to pay because I, I appreciate the product. I appreciate what they give me. I appreciate the escapism. I appreciate what they're putting on. I like it to the point where I love the bad guy. I love the good guy. I love everything about it. Even the ones who aren't that gro that that good, you know, like the, the transvestite rock guy. What What's what's his name? Uh, Kona Reeves or whatever the fuck his name is. I want to see that guy succeed even though he just he's freaky looking. He'd, I'd probably be better off just shaving his head. But whatever. He he looks like the rock wearing a wig. He looks like a gaunt, thin, gangly rock. Dwayne Johnson wearing a wig. A blonde wig. And it's just weird. He's got the tattoo on the side of the arm. It's just... He's a weird looking dude. And nothing against him. I mean, I, mean, I suppose, you know... I don't know, man. There's something about him. It's just, I don't know how... I, I, I as a fan, I, I couldn't give good input. Like, okay, what's not working? I don't know. I just something about him. Like, just his his look, his character, his face, his teeth. It's just... Everything about him just irritates me. Like, like just... just 
and I want to see the kid succeed. It, 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 uh, believe me, it's not like, oh, Roman Reigns, boo. No, I want to see the kid succeed. I want to see Roman Reigns succeed, too, but on the main roster, I don't give a fuck. And people, and they wonder why people are hostile. Because at least in the developmental in NXT, it's like, okay, they can work with it. They'll, they'll actually do something. They'll actually make real changes. Roman Reigns getting booed, they didn't make any change. They just kept going full steam ahead, toot toot, little fucking tugboat down the fucking river. Bullshit. Okay, whatever. It is what it is. Yeah, seriously, I don't know how the fuck they could change him other than do a complete different gimmick. <sighs> maybe different ring attire, maybe like a full, full, I don't know, man. Put him in some pants or something. I don't know. That, something about that kid just is not computing with me. And it's just... Oh, my God. He's just he's weird. He's just a weird dude. And I don't think you could get over that. It's just there's no way to make him interesting. And it sucks because... Yeah, I mean, again, he's a good... Kona Reeves, he's a really good example of of just like some people just they're not now one thing i noticed like the uk brand there's a lot of ugly looking dudes there they're just they're not pretty people <laughs> okay like orny or orny 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 oni 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 not orny oni lurking what the fuck that guy is not a pretty looking guy. It just he's not. You know, you know, you got some of these people are just like, oh my god, they're like so super handsome and oh my god, you know. Uh, he looks like he looks like somebody I'd be hanging out with. He looks like somebody from Camden. He just looks like, you know, a regular dude. Like he's not like supermodel dude. He's not, you know, George Clooney kind of shit. <laughs> Seriously. You know, nothing against that dude, but it's like some of the, seriously, some of the UK stars is just they're not pretty. You got, you got the one dude, you got the miss, you got the, the big the big guy there. He got missing teeth. You got the one dude. It's really really strange. I don't know why I'm talking about that, but well, it's like they're not your atypical wrestlers, or they're not your atypical like oh they they've got the look and they've got the, like these guys don't have look at all. The the, the look is just like. Fucking shit. You know. I don't know, man. Whatever. Anyways, beside the case. <sighs> I don't know. But, again, how do you make NXT profitable? Maybe if they had... I was thinking... Like, if they if they took their um, network and kicked it up to, like, fourteen ninety nine a month... And gave us an NXT takeover every month. I would pay an extra five bucks for that. I don't know if that would make it profitable. Probably not. I would pay extra for that. But the problem is now they got the UK brand, so now they're gonna have probably have UK pay per views as soon as they get the storylines going and all that stuff. So you probably have an NXT pay per view every month. It'll be UK and then it'll be OG. It'll be NXT and then NXT UK and whatever. So I don't know that that would I don't think that would bring in any money. See the problem is I will pay for that. I would give extra money for that. Not a lot of extra money, mind you, but I respect the product. It, the product seems to respect me as a, as a fan. I will gladly give money to that. Like if they said, okay, we're gonna make you pay for Raw every week. I mean, fuck you, fuck you. Although technically I kind of do because I get Hulu and I predominantly get it for Raw and SmackDown. And the only reason I do is because I have the network because I want the WWE Network to watch NXT and the takeovers. So if I'm watching that shit, well then they do the weekly or the monthly uh, pay-per-view. So shit, if I'm going to be watching that, then I might as well spend an extra 12 bucks to get Hulu so I can keep up with Raw and SmackDown so I know what the fuck is going on when the pay-per-view happens. It... <sighs> And luckily, I can do it for about what twenty five bucks a month. Okay, fine. Raw and SmackDown are garbage, but whatever. And not only that, but I get Hulu and I get all the fucking movies. Although I gotta be honest with you, between Netflix and Hulu, about eight times in the past month, I went to look for a movie, 
Motherfucker ain't on there. I was like, God damn it, now I gotta get up and actually go to my shelf out in the living room and try to find the movie that I want to find. Plane, trains, automobiles. Didn't find it. Uh, It's like, why am I paying for these services? Or why are we paying for these services when half the shit that I want to see is not even on there? Whatever, that's neither here nor there. Anyways, you know what? I'm tired of this. I don't want to talk about this no more. (sighs) Oh. I don't know. I just, I don't really seriously know. I don't want to come on here and bitch about the product. I don't want to insult Vince McMahon. You all right? You don't understand sneezing? You fucking poop. Seriously? You're going to sneeze on me? Don't look at me like that. You snooshed on daddy. Mr. Boat, she's daddy's little beagle buddy, huh? Yes, she is the cutest little beagle in town. Probably the only beagle in town. I wouldn't be surprised. Yes, because she's daddy's buddy, huh? Anyways, I don't know, what else is there to bitch about? I mean, there's plenty to bitch about, don't get me wrong. There's always something to bitch about, but... I don't know, you know, I think I'm pretty much done with this clip, because, like I said, it just... <laughs> and the, the the biggest biggest kick in the teeth, back over the head, where's the fucking tile and all, holy shit, about it is that there's simple changes, there's just simple little tweaks that they could do to make the product fucking better. They have they have a perfect blueprint in NXT. Again, I care about all of the characters. You want me to care about Roman Reigns? Give me a reason to care about Roman Reigns. Oh, he's going to be a fighting champion. You're going to go against Brock Lesnar for the 87th time. That doesn't make me interested in, in giving a fuck about Roman Reigns. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't build him up. It doesn't make me interested. I don't give a fuck. I don't care. Now, I understand little kids. They don't know the difference. They're watching. Oh, my God, he's so great. He's, you know... I get that. I understand that. But people like me, I don't know. Maybe I'm maybe I am old and cynical, and I just see through that bullshit. And it's like I, I can't suspend belief enough to give a fuck about certain characters that they've got on that program right now, Raw or SmackDown. I just can't suspend the belief enough to actually care. One of the biggest changes they could make is fuck the top guy concept. They all should be top guy and top girl. They all should be there. And this happened a few years ago when Cena went out. Cena went out with an injury around Christmas time. I can't remember when it was. Maybe 2013, 2014, somewhere in there. I could be wrong. Wasn't that long ago. He went out with injury. And again, it was right around Christmas time. They literally had nobody to fall back on. They had nobody to fall back on. Nobody. Again, back in the day, Stone Cold gets hurt. Boom. Rock moves up. Rock gets hurt. Boom. Triple H moved up. Mick Foley, so on and so forth. I mean, they had such a deep roster that HBK, I think, was like number six or seven on the roster. Like, like going, you know, down on the on the roster. When you've got HBK as like your number six and number seven and Mick Foley and guys like that, you're like, holy shit, that's a deep roster. Who do they have now? They have no one. Oh, Braun Strowman. Well, apparently Braun's hurt. They've done nothing with Braun. They've built him up. They've dropped him. They've built him up again. They've dropped him. They've built him up. They've dropped him. I'm getting to the point I don't even care about Braun Strowman anymore. I really don't care as a character. As a character, I don't care. Either give him the title or get the fuck off my TV. It's That's it's, it's where we're getting at. That's That right there is where we're at with him. And it's not his fault. He's doing nothing wrong. It's not the character. It's not even the person. It's the creative. Okay? It's that simple. You know? So it's like... Where do we go from here? You you give me characters. You give me these things. You don't build them up. You don't make them interesting. You do nothing to make me care. And yet... I'm the bad guy for thinking the product is garbage. I, I don't understand that. I'm telling you there's legitimately something wrong with this product. Now, I understand there's a bunch of nuthuggers who, who think it's 8 out of 10 and think it's the greatest thing ever. For whatever reason, hey, if you like mediocrity, 
Yeah, it's 8 out of 10. Great. Have fun with that. I think the show can be better. I think the show has more to offer. I think the show should be at a higher fucking level, especially if it's quote-unquote the A show. The A show should be just that, instead of being an asshole show. That's what it comes down to. It's come down to A stands for asshole. And bullshit. And everything else you possibly muster that's negative. And it's just, it boggles my mind how you've got a company that has two products. you got the main roster and you got NXT. NXT is so much fucking better. Because, again, you give me that kind of quality programming, you can do all your bullshit. You can do your little, you know, food fights and do all that bullshit. Give me good product in between, I'd be happy. And, again, when I say that, I'm not trashing the wrestling style or the wrestling or the talent and what they perform. I'm not talking I'm not even talking on that level. Now yeah, I understand Monday Night Raw that you're not gonna get twenty minute matches. Very rarely. I understand that. Maybe a main event, you're not gonna get that. So I understand that Monday Night Raw is kind of like an exhibition show where you're gonna get maybe ten minutes. I get that. I understand that. I do. I I, I generally understand that. But at least make those ten minutes not insult my intelligence. That's all I'm asking. Just the storylines and the outcomes and the way the things play out. And just stupid, stupid, bullshit, constant, after one, after another. I don't know. I really generally freaking don't know. Like I said, the fixes are very simple. Just even one or two, five or six maybe, at max. Little tweaks here or there. The product would be at least acceptable, you know? But like I said, it just pisses me off because I know this product can be better. I've seen it better. And no, you don't need a stone cold out there flipping everybody off and drinking beer. You don't even need to do that. You can have PG bullshit, but still have quality PG bullshit. I mean, honestly... And I don't see why that's such a problem. I don't see why that's such a uh, um, negative concept. Why can't we have quality and they can still make their money doing the bullshit that they're doing? Now, listen, I can understand a limited work schedule as far as like just, okay, we're giving them 10-minute matches instead of 20-minute matches to save their bodies and all that kind of stuff. I am all for that. And that, that end of it is a whole other side, and it's, I get it. And Raw should be an exhibition show, essentially. Just, you know, they come out, blah, 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 tell a little story, push the story forward. Fine. But they're not even doing that. They're not even pushing stories forward. And when they do, they last all of, like, ten minutes, and it's like, okay, that's that was the big epic story that you're going to tell coming out of Survivor Series or whatever pay-per-view currently that's the, the that's the narrative you're going to give okay where do we go from here eh who cares we'll start something new next week that doesn't make an entertaining show it just doesn't i mean because that's the problem with the episodic show like you take any program I remember this one show, it, was, it had one season, it was on Fox, it was called John Doe, and it had the dude from uh, Prison Break in it. And it was actually a decent show, it was kind of a fun concept. But what they did, and the reason it only lasted one season, is that instead of telling the, the overarching umbrella part of the story, like, oh, the behind the scenes, and things were here, and things are going here, they focused simply on the episodic, week-to-week, bullshit, throwaway story. Like, oh, he helped this one guy, and he helped this rancher, and he did this, and he did that, and they focus more on that bullshit, and then toward the end, they they try to bulk it up and be like, oh, here's some of the backstory, here's some of the more interesting stuff that makes you give a fuck, and by then it was too late, nobody gave a shit, nobody watched it. It's the same thing here. They're so busy worrying about just the weekly episodic adventure bullshit that they're not telling an overarching story to make me care, make me come back each week and be like, uh. Oh. Like, during Survivor Series, they were showing a promo for 
Raw, and they had Lesnar bouncing around, going, ah, with this little face and shit. And they're taking his little little visage, and he's, he's just kind of bopping around on the screen. I'm like, and it's like, tune in Monday Night Raw. I'm like, I'm not going to tune in Monday Night Raw after seeing that commercial. That commercial makes me want to weep. Brock Lesnar not making me tune in Monday Night Raw. He's not. Now, Paul Heyman, he make me tune in. You know? Seth Rollins, he made me tune in. Dean Ambrose, and their little feud, that made me tune in. Not Brock Lesnar. Not him bopping around making little angry faces. Like, oh, the Beast Incarnate. On Raw, tune in. I'm like, what? I'm sorry, that's just, no. Did the exact opposite of what they wanted it to do. <sighs> I don't know. Anyways, you know, I don't want to talk about this anymore. I wasted an hour and a half of my fucking life talking about this bullshit. And I'll probably get up and go watch NXT TakeOver again or some fucking bullshit. <sighs> and it's just, it's depressing. And then there are some people, these fucking idiots in the fucking community, they're like, well, if you don't like Monday Night Raw, you, you still have NXT, you can go back and watch that. Why can't we have every fucking... Why can't all three major brands... Raw, SmackDown, and, and, and NXT. Why can't they all be on par? Why can't they all be good? You know? It's like, it's like Raw is Roman Reigns, and NXT is, oh, pick anybody, Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, Bobby Roode, Asuka, all these fucking people that they've neglected over the fucking years. Like, they immediately, they immediately get called up, and then they get just, just, just buried under the fucking rug. I mean, Bobby Roode was must-see. No, it's like, I don't even give a fuck. I, honestly, God, who was it? Um, I can't even remember. It was so bad. Um, oh, Eric Young was one. And it was somebody else. And it's like, they, they popped up for, like, two minutes on, on the screen, and I'm like... Holy shit, they're still fucking employed with the company? I I didn't even... I completely forgot Sanity was in... Now, keep in mind, I watch Hulu. So, I don't know if they're actually on the, uh, the two-hour show on SmackDown. I completely forgot Sanity was part of SmackDown. Cause I was sitting there thinking, uh, like, the day before I saw him, and I was like... What happened to that Killian Dane? Whatever happened to that guy? Because he was in War Games and had like the fucking greatest showing of his life in War Games, and then they call him up, and it was a year ago, and I was like, "What the fuck happened to that guy?" I didn't even know they were still fucking employed. Yeah, when they came out with uh, Nikki Cross there, and it was like, "Why do you have talent like that?" And I, as a viewer who watches weekly, I don't, again, I'm amazed when I, when I realize that they're still employed. Now, I could see if they were hurt and they went away for six months, eight months, nine months, a year because of injury. I can understand that. But, I mean, I, I'm sitting there thinking, holy shit, they're still fucking employed? That's not that's not a good sign. There's something wrong going on with the product when when that is your only like I I was tickled fucking pink when I saw them. I'm like, "Holy shit, I forgot about these guys." They're, oh my god. And you got guys like San Almas, San, San Almas. That fucking guy is great at what he does and they're doing nothing with him. He should have been on Survivor Series. End of discussion. He should be like the MVP of Survivor Series every year and Survivor Series. Uh, Survivor Series and SummerSlam every year. Those should be his two main shows where he is he is the main focus. He is the type of guy who is fit for those two uh, pay-per-views. Especially Survivor Series. And... I don't know, man. It's like if, 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 if they're fan favorites and they're actually good at what they do, the main roster's like, yeah, fuck that man. Fuck that guy. We want to push, we want to push, you know, Tamina. Who's boring as fuck. Yeah, forget C.N. Elmas, who's actually, you know, puts on a good show and actually can, 
can wrestle and perform really well. Fuck him. Fuck him. We don't want anything to do with him. We're going to bury him and put over stupid guys, you know, like Ray. No offense to Ray Mysterio, but who cares? You know, we're going to bury him to put these guys over. That's exactly what they did. You can sit there and say, well, it wasn't a burial. No, it was a burial. It was. They fucking threw him under the bus. Because if that's if, if that wasn't the case, then A, he would have won. He would have been on, on Survivor Series team. So the fact he wasn't on the Survivor Series team, uh, he got buried. Fuck you. Okay, it's logic. This is how it works. He, he wasn't there. Fuck him. You know? I mean, honestly, you, you're putting over people that are boring as shit that nobody actually wants to see, A, because you haven't done anything with them, and B, just because they're boring. Yet you shove those fuckers down our throat, but the people who are actually good quality you know, hands and actually good talent, no, no, we're not going to show them. Fuck that. I don't know, man. I just That really irritates me. That just really irritates me. You know, I'm literally paying good money. I'm buying Hulu and fucking... The, the network and all this other bullshit to watch this and you're not giving me the guys and girls that I want to see and again I don't want to trash Tamina specifically or even Naya I want to see them get better I want to see them succeed I don't want to see them be in main event when they're not that good right now they're currently not that good they should not be in the main event they should not the idea of those two specifically were were on a team at Survivor Series, but almost was not. That is a fucking problem there. An absolute problem right there. I, I whatever. Anyways, like I said, I'm done. I don't want to talk about this anymore. So you know what? At the end of the day, at the end of the day, fuck you.